All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachel Kurash, the bonus to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to Allah, I can push his word with true charity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word and he calls God and Jehovah, Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name with the word and he calls Jesus and Rachel Kurash is the Holy Spirit. As always, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird, the scattered Israelite foreigners, scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations to whom they've been scattered to, but whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites no matter what your appearance may seem to be, you see. And as always, on the brother uh, Yadiah from the Great Millstone Branch out here in Chicago, and I'm back at you with another lesson. It's going to be entitled Cry Out, you see. Uh... And uh, this this is going to be a quick lesson. Uh, Spirit just hopped up on me. You know, I was watching the Elder Malcolm a video. And um, he was going in, you know, bringing out some scriptures. And, hey, you know, it just got inspired. But um, this is Jeremiah 6 and verse 2. It says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You see? So, hey, our nation, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and speckled bird, we're likened unto the uh, the bride of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, uh, a woman. A comely woman, you see. And hey, what happened is uh, we've been scattered amongst these other nations. And hey, we went a horn after their gods and committed spiritual fornication against our power. You see. Uh, so lucky, let me see. We've been unfaithful to our power, you see. Uh... This is uh, this, uh, Jeremiah 50 and verse 6. It says, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. And those mountains that represent other nations, governments, and so forth. It says, They have gone from mountain to hill and they have forgotten their resting place. And that's what happened, man. We've been spread amongst all these different nations and been defiled with them. We've forgotten who we truly go back to, which is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You see, it says, They that have gone from mountain to hill, they have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, We. Offend not because they have sinned against Yahweh, the habitation of justice, even Yahweh, the hope of their fathers. You see, so hey, going amongst these other nations, and hey, they destroyed us. You see? And a hey, point I was trying to be into, uh, get into is a hey, we've been scattered amongst these other nations. And a hey, now here and today, we must cry out. You see, when you go into the book of Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, I believe, you know, it goes into the law of, uh, of, of uh, rape. You know, because that's what hey, is in the scriptures, man. But um, it's a specific verse here. Yeah, this is uh, Deuteronomy 22 and 23. It says, if a damsel that is that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband and a man find her in a city and lie with her. Then ye shall bring them both out of the gate of the city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. So hey, here in Deuteronomy 22nd chapter goes in, uh, you know, basically adultery in this specific verse. You know, if a woman, she betrothed to a husband and she sleep with another man and it was consensual, both of them get put to death. Right. It says, then shall you bring them both unto the gate of that city and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not. Being in a city and the man, because he have humbled his neighbor's wife, so thou shalt put away evil from among you. You see, so they, in this scenario, the woman got put to death because she cried not out. You see, and relaying that spiritually, looking at a spiritual note, going back to that Jeremiah, I believe, 6 and 2. We're the, we're the uh, daughter of Zion, we're the woman of the Lord. And when the Lord comes back, if he don't see us crying out for all the uh, abominations that be done here, he's going to. Look at us as if we consent unto the rape that's being done unto our nation. You see, this is uh, Ezekiel. <clears throat> this is Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. It says, And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark, that mark going into the Thawah, meaning a uh, mark of exemption from judgment. 
It says, upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You see? So, hey, those that are found sighing and crying for the abominations that be done hey, here amongst our people, hey, hey, to our people, that our people uh, do. If you're not crying out uh, against those things, you're for it. You see, it says, and to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. So for those that don't want to uh, cry out, but that's down with this, uh, these uh, perverse ways that we've been taught and groomed to be. Hey, you're going to be hey, you're going to be found a part of the problem. So when the Lord comes back, he's going to destroy you, man. It says, verse six, slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men, which were before the house. You see, and that's what it is, man. The Lord, when he comes back, whether you believe or whether you don't believe. Hey, you're going to be held accountable for what's going on. You see, so it's best that you cry out to the heavenly father. And ask that he come back and save us, because if you don't, that means you're, you're fine with it. And what did the Lord say? This uh, Zephaniah 1 and verse 12, and it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, Yahweh will not do good, neither will he do evil. The Lord is going to do a thorough search all among, amongst all his people and punish those that aren't looking for him, that are, that are comfortable, relaxed, that's not hastening the day of the Lord, that's not looking forward to these prophecies, that's not crying out to him and judge him. Why? Because hey, this man Esau, Edom, and these other nations, they have, they, they have devoured us. They're clapping their hands. They got us in a, in a state, that lowest state that they always wanted us to be in. And instead of you crying to your God, your husband, ask him to come and save you, you're like, oh, no, keep raping me. Keep, keep, keep poisoning my community. Keep brainwashing our women. Keep uh, brainwashing our men. Keep effeminizing our young men. Keep masculinizing our, our, that's a word, our young women. Keep destroying our people, man. You see? And that's what these people don't realize, man. Hey, we're signing and crying so that the Lord come back and deliver us, man. We're not, uh, we, uh, we understand what's happening right now. Uh, let's grab that in uh, Isaiah. We, under, we, we see the reality of what's going on with our people. This is uh, Isaiah 1 and verse... Uh, This is Isaiah 1 and 6. It says, From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And our people are mentally, physically, spiritually sick. You see? And nothing that we've tried to do as a people, none of these leaders, none of these, nobody had the answers until now. You see, it says, verse 7, Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, hey, go look at the land of Israel, right? It says strangers devoured in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. The cities that you live in now, de hey, desolate. Go on the west side of Chicago. Go on the south side of Chicago, man. Look at the homes. Look at the state of our people. You see? It says, verse 8, And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. And we understand, hey, that our people hey, are totally trapped, man. You know, hey, we're surrounded by our enemies. You know, we're being preyed upon. But yet, when we come and bring these titans, hey, some of our people don't want to hear it. Or they just, or they just turn a blind ear. And just because they can, they, just because Esau, even the serpent claimed white man, gives them an occasion to their flesh. He allows them to be fleshly when we're a spiritual people. It says, verse 9, Except Yahweh of hosts have left unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. You see, so if the Lord didn't leave a remnant that'll come back to him in a latter day, we'd be totally destroyed, man. You see? So. I got two quick ones. This is Isaiah 19 and 19. And that day there should be an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to Yahweh. And, and we know in uh, Revelation 11 chapter, it calls this land, Babylon the Great, a spiritual Sodom in Egypt. So it's speaking of here now, here in today's day, and Babylon the Great. 
You got the camps set up all around here, crying out unto the Lord, sacrificing unto the Lord. It says, verse 20, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. You see, so hey, we must cry in order to get, hey, we must cry so the Lord hears our prayer, our cries and our prayers and send us Yahweh Shai and deliver us, man. You see? We must cry this up. Baruch 4 and 21. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto Yahweh, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemies. You see, so hey, we must cry so that the Lord comes and deliver us. Verse 22. For my hope is in the everlasting that he will save you, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. You see? It says, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. Like as now the neighbors of Zion has seen your captivity, so shall they see surely your salvation from our God, which shall come unto you with great, with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. You see? I keep reading. And our salvation, as it says in the book of Romans, is nearer than ever, ever before, roughly paraphrasing. It says, verse 25, my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. It says, for thy enemy have persecuted thee, but surely thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. And the Lord is going to come back and set us up and we're going to give vengeance on these nations for what they've done unto us. My delicate, verse 26, my delicate ones have gone rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of good cheer. It's like it. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto the Most High, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. You see, so we must cry so the Lord hears our prayers. And hey, when he comes back, he see us signing, and crying and looking for him and hastening to him and he deliver us. You see, so hey, we must cry out. Lord willing, this is just a quick and edifying lesson. Call her line block. Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Hawaka Kurash. The one said, Elves and the Apostles of the Great Millstone. Citation, I can push the word, true charity. Shalom, Barakatham, Wa Baba Ball.